pay close attention to this clip I'm about to show you. Me and my girls, we were out on New Year's Eve. Um, this is when I first met Ty. He approached me, was in the parking lot. Um, we was turning up, and he approached me with his little, you know, hi, pretty lady, how you doing? And do you got a man? And I'm like, no, but I'm talking to somebody. He said, no, you just need to talk to me. And it was good. And he used to take me on dates. We used to go walk on the park, you know. He was good with my daughter. It was those little things that attracted me to him that made me like, OK, yes, this relationship's going to work. We just moved into our apartment together. Did you catch what she did wrong? If not, rewind and watch again. Most modern women and some men will have no clue as to what she did wrong. We have been so programmed with the fantasy of falling in love and women getting swept off their feet by Prince Charming that we think how she met her boyfriend was perfectly fine. But my experienced mature gentlemen and hardcore players out there and pickup artists instantly know where she went wrong. Let's go over the clip step by step so I can point out the problems. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so we can keep this new channel growing. Me and my girls, we were out on New Year's Eve. Um, this is when I first met Ty. He approached me, was in the parking lot. Her name is Rhea, a 25-year-old single mom of a young daughter. She's that perfect age where she needs to be mindful of marriage clock ticking but she has enough time to vet the guy who would become or could become her future husband. But women, just like men, need to be proactive about sending choosing signals to the right person. Men already know they have to send the first signal, but modern women have been told they don't have to do a doggone thing that God will send Prince Charming to sweep them off their feet. Why, ladies, why? I'll give Rhea props for keeping herself in shape as a single mom, given how the chances of finding a good guy as a single mom decreases in the dating market. But the first problem Rhea has in this situation is that she was not focused on trying to proactively find a good man. She was out partying on New Year's Eve with her girl group, and some of you already know how I feel about those. When women are in packs, they are more focused on their girls than looking for a good guy. And that's fine, but women should realize that most good guys are not comfortable approaching women in groups. But experienced gentlemen who have time to psychologically break girl groups up may do so if the woman is a 9 or a 10 kind of fine. But opportunistic players always find time and know how to play the Prince Charming role that women are so weak in the knees and vulnerable to. Okay, all right, let's continue. Keeping in mind that she's in a girl group, oh boy, out partying at a club on New Year's Eve of all tipsy holidays, the worst and most vulnerable scenario to meet a good dude. Um, we was turning up, and he approached me with his little, you know, hi, pretty lady, how you doing? And do you got a man? And I'm like, no, but I'm talking to somebody. He said, no, you just need to talk to me. And it was good. And he used to take me on dates. We used to go walk on the park. You know, he was good with my daughter. It was those little things that attracted me to him that made me like, OK, yes, this relationship's going to work. We just moved into our apartment together. Quote, he approached me. We was in a parking lot, and he was good, unquote. Oh boy. So she let a random guy approach her after midnight in a club parking lot. Boy, that sounds like perfect husband material. <laughs> Not. If you've seen the show Cheaters before, you already know what kind of guy this is. But I'm doing this video because most women ignore the very first approach scenario where all the clues are. I know, I'm going to have some women and a few men come and say, but I met my husband and wife at a club and we've been married 150 years. <laughs> yeah, 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 whatever, spare me. That's that confirmational bias nonsense. 
Just because you magically found your spouse at a club does not mean that's the norm for successful marriages. I define a successful marriage as one that has lasted at least 10 years with no physical violence or cheating. If a divorce happens because both call it quits, it can still be successful but just not perfect. Now, a perfect marriage, on the other hand, is one where there is no divorce and one spouse dies at some point. Till death do us part. Marriages should last a lifetime, but given the modern era, a successful marriage does not have to end perfectly. Yeah, it's complex, but hopefully you get the picture. We all want perfect marriages, but will settle for successful ones that don't end in violence or cheating. Now let's continue. After he approached her, he spit game in her ears, complimenting her looks and asked if she got a man. Um, we was turning up. And he approached me with his love, you know, how pretty lady, how you doing? And do you got a man? And I'm like, no, but I'm talking to somebody. He said, no, you just need to talk to me. Women. This is where your big egos get in the way of discernment and decision making. By stroking your egos, players disarm you, especially if you find them attractive. She threw all common sense out the window. She told him she ain't got a man, but is talking to someone. <laughs> talking to someone. Why bother saying that? Pickup artists sense weakness in this kind of reply, which is why this guy told her, Nah, you just need to talk to me only. And she loved that confidence. <laughs> Ladies can be so shallow. Y'all so shallow. Y'all don't understand that most good guys don't talk like this. They don't work like this. Yet all y'all say you want a good man. <laughs> yeah, right. Good guys typically don't have the confidence of a player player. But yet, women love this arrogance because it matches their inflated egos. <laughs> Rhea said, and it was good, talking about his confidence and telling her she only needs to talk to him. And right here is how the stone cold player won her heart in that Disney fantasy propaganda kind of way. She did not vet him at all. No purpose on her part, no important questions, just let him in her inner circle on the spur of the moment. At some point later, she let him move in with her and her daughter. Oh boy, why ladies, why? Now the young daughter is going to look to him as some kind of stepdaddy figure. This should have been reserved for marriage, not for some random dude you meet in the parking lot of a club. <laughs> and then y'all say all men are trash and all men are cheaters. Well, look at how you're meeting them. <laughs> as obvious as this might sound now, modern women fall for this fraud in many similar scenarios out in these wild streets gas stations, stores, etc., all that stuff. They don't send choosing signals to the right guys because they feel so entitled and have massive egos that they think random men should approach them wherever in any setting and spit game at them with the most confidence and be attractive. And that's it. <laughs> Man. So, fellas, when you see women complain about men are trash and men are cheaters, this is exactly why they say this. Despite the fact that most men are one woman guys, the good guys finish last with these kind of women. Leave you, but this the that you was working on at work. This the machine that you was working on at work. You knew you was in her bed, though. Okay. <laughs> so you, so you can understand why she upset. I told you I understood, but I'm uh, her. Uh, <laughs> that who you going home with? Is you coming to get your? Tonight or what? I got money. You don't. I got money. Early. I got money. I got money. Okay, so now you have the anatomy of the failed dating approach that modern women fall for because of their Hollywood romance programming. Let's see if you learned enough from this one to tell where this next lady goes wrong. Derek and I met about four years ago. He had a club. And uh, when I first met him, he was like Prince Charming to me. We moved in together approximately about two years ago and everything was great. Um, it's just lately, just there's a difference in him. He seems distant. Derek, age 42, 
A restaurant owner accused of sampling another woman's cooking. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so we can keep this new channel growing. Did you notice problems with K? First, K is on the heavy side, BBW, which already takes 70 to 80% of men out of the picture. Ladies and men, too, should realize that staying in shape is the best strategy in the dating market. Besides that, K comes across a bit too masculine. If you watch the full video, you'll see it come out towards the end. But notice where she met Derek, her dude. Just like our first girl, Rhea, she also met him at a club. Oh boy. Apparently a club he owned and managed, or managed. This means she was in a weak, vulnerable state of mind. She didn't bet him properly, and she likely did not send choosing signals. Ladies, stop meeting future boyfriends at clubs. Gentlemen don't really go to clubs anymore like they used to. I did a video on why nightclubs need to change their business model to cater to men because we just don't like them <laughs> at all. Girls go out in groups, seldom if ever send choosing signals because they believe God will send them a good man at a club. <laughs> and girl groups often antagonize or criticize good men because one or more bitter women in the group will get mad that a guy is trying to holler at one of them. Kay said when she first met Derek, he was like Prince Charming. <laughs> Here we go with that again. Oh my goodness. What's wrong with you Disney program modern women? Just get rid of Prince Charming from your mind, your vocabulary, your doggone life. If you need help, seek therapy. If you're doing it, stop it. Get some help. In my Michael Jordan voice. <laughs> I'll give Kay credit for not rushing to move in with Derek as it took two years before, before they did so. So all you fast moving women out there should pay attention to that timeline. Two years. Of course, it would have been better if they got married after two years of dating as shacking up, you know, living together without being married is sometimes a red flag actually. All right, long story short, if you paid attention, Kay said, Kay, Kay said that when they first moved in together, things were great. Now, we don't know what great means, given that later in the full video, she says she was financially helping out with his businesses and stuff like that. Usually what comes with women giving men money for business is the entitlement to tell men what to do with that money. But of course, a player is gonna play. So he probably, he probably took that money and told her whatever she wanted to hear, probably, most likely. All right, that's it for this video. Hopefully you learned the importance of, first, of the first dating approach as it will tell you everything you need to know about what will happen in most relationships. Women, step your dating game up, stop being lazy. Stop being so lazy and learn to send choosing signals to the right guys in the right setting just like women used to do decades ago. God gave you a mouth and eyes for a reason. Until modern women improve how they handle the initial dating approach, the apocalypse of good men will continue. Welcome to the Brother Apocalypse.